In 2009, I met one of my dearest friends that I now call a sister. This young lady was brave enough to share her story with me. She lost her father during the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda at the age of five. Two years later, her mother died as well due to the consequences of the genocide. As the oldest sister, she became a mother figure to her two siblings. Her story is one of the foundations of my healing journey. Do you know why? Because her story gave me a sense of belonging, because I could relate. Her story, her courage of sharing her story, her painful story, gave me strength and uh, safety to share my story as well. And that was the beginning of my healing journey. I was two years old during the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. My father was killed during that tragedy, and the lives of some of my uncles, aunties, cousins, and many other members of my extended family are among the estimation of one million Tutsi who were killed in 100 days. One million people in 100 days. I was lucky to survive with my mother, who managed to escape, and we went to DRC in Congo, and we lived there as the refugees until it was safe enough for us to go back to Rwanda. So us who were young during the genocide, we don't recall much of what happened, but we grew up facing the consequences of that atrocity in every corner of our lives. We were raised by people who were so heartbroken. We grew up in a country that had lost its social fabric and in a community that had lost faith in humanity. When I became an adolescent, that's when my trauma started to be very obvious. I started to experience depression, nightmares, loneliness, frustration, anger, and confusion. In my community, therapy is not a familiar tradition, and it's not affordable to so many. So I didn't know that that was trauma. Uh, because I never shared my story with, I had never shared my story with anyone. And I had no knowledge of or access to therapy. So I was fighting a battle with myself that nobody knew about. Because I was starting the adolescent stage, everybody was connecting my trauma behavior with my adolescence. The most important part of my life that was affected was my education. I started to perform poorly in school, not because I wasn't smart, but because I was fighting a battle with myself and that nobody knew about. When my education was affected, I completely lost hope because that was the only tool and opportunity I had at that moment to create a better future that I was yearning for. I was suffering, suffering because I was trying to make sense of something that will never make sense, the genocide. Murdering people because of who they are or because they are different from you us versus them mentality. I remember the very first time I shared my story with my friend. It was like taking off a 200 pound burden off of my shoulder. And the more I shared my story, the more freedom and light came into my life. Sharing my story is one of the tools that helped to restore the rhythm of my life. That's why I have dedicated my life to creating space where survivors like myself can come together and share their stories with the purpose of healing. And I started with my community in Rwanda. April 7th of this year will mark 26 years since the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. 
This time that seems to be long ago makes people think that maybe the reason support that is still needed for the survivors in Rwanda. But there's no correlation between time and healing. For the survivors, the genocide is as clear as if it happened yesterday. Trauma among survivors and their descendants, trauma through, the, trauma through, through generation, and incurable diseases are some of the challenges that survivors are still facing in Rwanda. I learned more of these ongoing challenges um, of the survivors in 2016 when I was working with Survivors Fund and Foundation Rwanda, organizations that support survivors in Rwanda. My role with these organizations was to listen to the stories of the women who experienced rape during the genocide and the children that they conceived from that rape in Kenya, Rwanda, our mother language, and translate their stories in English. And uh, so that we can use those stories to create awareness and educate people about the genocide and its ongoing consequences. So I found myself in a sea of stories that I have never heard before and stories that I couldn't bear. Stories of mass murder, stories of hate, stories of pain and stories of rape. Some women lost count of men who raped them. The UN estimate that 25,000 women were raped during the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. For some of these women, when I met them, I could see in their eyes that they wanted to share their stories, but their mouths couldn't articulate or find words to use to tell those stories. For others, they were craving for someone who can simply listen to their stories. Drawing from my personal experience of how sharing my story helped me to push through the journey of healing, I said, how can I create a safe space where these women and can come together and share their stories with the purpose of helping each other to heal? So that's how the retreat idea was born. Retreat for Women Genocide Survivors serves as a psychological and financial support to the women who experienced rape during the genocide in Rwanda. For the financial support, these women are introduced to income generating activities and where they learn about basic business ideas and they receive loans through the revolving fund so that they can start businesses and generate income for themselves. Because one of the sustainable ways of um, eradicating poverty and uh, bring hope, bring back hope is to teach people how to fish instead of giving them fish. Uh, for the psychological part of the retreat, um, it comes from sharing, their, from sharing our stories. These women come together and they share their stories and they, they empower each other. We had women who shared their stories for the very first time after more than 20 years because they, they were inspired by the stories of their fellow survivors, and they connected, and they felt safe enough to share their stories as well. We had a woman who is HIV positive because of rape that she experienced during the genocide, and had stopped, stopped taking medication because she, had, she, did, she wanted to die, and uh, she didn't have hope anymore. And after the retreat, after listening to the stories of other women, she said, no matter what, life is worth living. And she accepted to take medication again. That's saving a life. After the retreat, they form um, sisterhood groups in villages where they keep meeting and sharing their stories and create a support system within themselves. And they always have access from our program, uh, access to other forms of therapy so that they can keep moving forward in the journey of healing. So please let's honor and bring the voices of these women in this room through a short documentary that we are going to watch. Kuvuga ko anje kwa rukurira 
kurebana n'umuntu gutya amaso ku maso numva guri uri busome me confite ibibazo mu mutima uri umenye ko nafashwe ku ngufu simwe mu ngaruka nagize nyine kibazo kike cyo kurwara uburwayi budakira ubwandu bwa virus tera sida mu byuririzi byabayeho haje mu nicyuririzi kije no kumaso bituma rero namaso ndavuza ariko amaso biza kurangira n'ubundi amaso atakaje ubushobozi bwo kubona twari tukira abakobwa turabana benshi amabo bishe hari nabo bafashe ku ngufu amabo bafashe ku ngufu nti babatera inda hari amabo bafashe ku ngufu babatera inda ndetse ni indwara zitakira uteza amatwi uko aba bose bavugaga bikwereka yuko tugifite urugendo rwo gufasha abacitse ku icumu rya genocide gukira cyane cyane abagore even though i knew that rape is one of the weapons that have been used during the genocide in 2016 it was my first time to hear a story of a woman who experienced rape during the genocide in Rwanda. Then I started thinking about what I can do to support those women, because for them, it's not only about surviving the genocide. They live with the consequences of the genocide. A large number of them, they are HIV positive because of rape, and they have children born of rape. Everything around them is a memory of what happened to them in 1994. Ihungabana riturutse ku bugome bw'umuntu iri muri remera hanyuma iyo wongereyeho no gufatwa ku ngufu nanone uburemere burongera gukikuba ikindi kibiremereza cyane nuko hari ibintu byoroha kubwira abantu kubera ko haba hari mipfunwe harimo no kwicira urubanza biri mu bifungirana umuntu cyane ku buryo abo badamu n'abana babo bo bibona societe babona ikabafungirana gusa ku gikomere no ku buryo abo bana bavutse ntago bagomba kwitwa abadamu bafashwe ku ngufu kuko bafite ibindi ibindi bikoze identite zabo I thought about a retreat that can bring together some of these women for them to have a safe space where they can share their stories with the guidance of counselors and psychologists to help each other heal and find strength to help them move forward in life. Survivors Fund works to empower genocide survivors in Rwanda and the UK. Among our work is to support women who were raped during the genocide and have children born as a result of these rapes. Aha hantu haranejeje uri huriro ryaranejeje cyane. Hari nubwo naryamagase nsinzira ariko buriya naragiye kuko twe twari tugana nuriya twabonanya kambwira amateka yakambwira ukuntu yarwaye si dukuntu bamutaye nsanga kewe ahubwe byanje byasa nkaho byoroshye. Bana mutsebonje yewe andi mahugurwa angana ni nkayo bamaze guhabwa bagera ku kigero gishimishije kandi kinejeje I think all the widows or most of the widows we have here in Rwanda have shown resilience of a high high level because knowing what we've gone through during the genocide, including rape, including infection with HIV and AIDS, including destruction of property, including loss of everything, and you see people still surviving and laughing and talking, the level of resilience is very high. The pain and sorrow of these women should be a lesson to the world to turn never again into a reality. Their courage and resilience should be a good example that we don't have to let our past hold us back.
nimbo za chikinege abo mwafashije dushobora kubibigware ariko abadukomoka nzi ko natwe mu magambo twababwiye bazabigira mu muragi Thank you. Thank you. This retreat has now become an annual event, and my hope is to reach more women, not only in Rwanda, but also around the world. There is power in sharing our stories. I'm a living testimony of that, and these women you have seen in the video, as well as other my fellow survivors' experience, I have witnessed that there is power in sharing our stories. When we share our stories, we connect. When we connect, we heal, and when we heal, we change the world. Now, my challenge to each and everyone in this room is to ask ourselves, how am I, am I creating safe space to the people around me to feel safe now, enough to share their stories? As I leave this stage, I want to remind everyone <laughs> that creating safe space for the people around us is a more responsibility. And to make this world a better place and more peaceful is everybody's business. Thank you. <laughs>